Good morning. Uh, Tuesday morning as we awake and we begin our day opening God's Word together. I want to take opportunity to invite you uh, to join with us. And one of the best ways to do that would be to, to grab a Bible or have a Bible with you so you can read along. And uh, together we just, um, uh, as we read God's Word, we listen uh, for, for God to speak. We, uh, we recognize, we look carefully at what God is saying in His Word. And so I, I join you, I, or I invite you to join us and turn with me to the first book of the Bible, Genesis, and then to chapter 21. So Genesis chapter 21 is where we're going to be this morning as we look at the child of promise. And we'll just read the first seven verses this morning from this text. The Lord said to Sarah, uh, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age. At the appointed time uh, that God had told him, Abraham named his son who was born to him, the one Sarah bore to him, Isaac. And when his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God had commanded. Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and everyone who hears will laugh with me. She also said, Who would have told Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne a son for him in his old age. Uh, so, a wonderful story. And what I would have us to recognize this morning is that, well, actually, there, there are in many ways that this story reflects the life of faith that God has called us to. Uh, matter of fact, throughout the scriptures, Abraham is called the father uh, of our faith. And he is. He is through Abraham that God chose to bring his son into the world to effect his redemptive plan for you and me. And so there, there are many different types, there are many different pictures in the story of Abraham. Uh, but I, I, uh, a couple things that I, that I would just want to draw out uh, from our reading this morning. Now, 25 years passed from when God called Abraham to leave the Ur of Chaldees. And in Genesis chapter 12, and verse 2, God had given Abraham the promise that he would be a father of a nation. 25 years pass. Uh, God gives him the promise several times. You get down to verse or chapter 15, Genesis 15. Uh, Abraham begins to question the promise. Uh, he begins to say, well, is my steward going to be my heir? And To which God says, no, he is not your heir. You will have your own son. And then in chapter 16, uh, 13 more years pass, and uh, God reaffirms his promise. And at that time, uh, God says that uh, Sarah is the one who's going to conceive, or um, actually he changes in that, in that passage her name from Sarai to Sarah. And uh, then in chapter 18, uh, God promises again, this time with a date. For he says, this time next year, uh, your wife Sarah will conceive. And of course, this is the text where Sarah laughs behind the, the flap of the tent and denies it, you'll remember. But my point in all of this is, is to note that Isaac is a child of promise. In fact, as, as we look at it, there's actually more said about Isaac before his birth than after his birth. Uh, God was promising Abraham uh, the son, and, and through the son, a nation. And Isaac, of course, would be uh, Israel. Um, and the nation of Israel would come from Isaac uh, through his son Jacob. Now, a couple things to, to note from the story, right? Number one is that, and this is important to us, God is no hurt, in no hurry when it comes to his promises. 
we must remember that God is eternal and that he is working out his eternal plans and his plans are not set by human measure. And the truth is, even in our own lives, um, we sense this. Right? We, we wonder, you know, when, when we know that God has promised to provide for us, um, and yet we don't see it right now, and we're going to need it in a few weeks, <laughs> we get upset or we get, we get tense, we get nervous. But God keeps his promises, and it's the fulfillment of his promises are according to his time. And I've experienced it many times, and I trust probably you've experienced it times before, is that God meets the need when the need is there, not when we want it. Uh, God fulfills the promise according to his time. He is in no hurry uh, when it comes to his promises. Um, there are many promises that have been made to us. Some of those promises have already been fulfilled. Other promises we are still waiting on. But like Abraham, for you and I, we are called to a life of faith. That means we're trusting God. And we trust his timetables. And it might be this morning that you're, um, you're experiencing worry or fear. And it ha really has to do with uh, the time. Uh, you, you want to see the answer uh, to your prayer. You want to see uh, the, the need met now. Well, God will keep his promise. You live by faith. Trust him. Uh, Abraham struggled with this, but you know what? We all struggle with faith, but God is growing our faith. He wants to grow your faith. He's far more concerned about your character uh, than he is about the conditions of your life. And he will use, sometimes it's hardship, sometimes it's uh, a, a challenge and even a uh, emptiness, a feeling of emptiness sometimes that gets our attention and, call, and causes us to call out to God and to seek Him. And He desires to grow you faith, to grow your dependence upon Him. Um, faith has to supersede our feelings. Well, we trust God even when we don't feel it. And so God, God is working within us just as He did uh, with Abraham. And then there's the fulfillment. Um, when we look at Isaac's birth, uh, there's no question that it is a miraculous birth. right? So there's no question that God had answered the promise. And uh, God receives the glory in, in this way uh, because it was a miraculous fulfillment. And God desires to uh, provide the same for you and I. Um, without question, fulfillment of his promise, without question, his provision, his way, in his time. And then as, as we look at Isaac's birth, we see that God does what only God can do, and that is he gives life where there is death. Uh, both Abraham and uh, Sarah uh, were dead to having children. Physically, it was impossible for them and, and they understood that. Um, and, and so the birth of Isaac was miraculous. Uh, God brings life out of death. And the same is true for you and I. We were dead in our trespasses and sin. We were separated from God. We had no hope uh, in and of ourselves. But through Jesus Christ, God has given to us life miraculously. Our salvation is a miracle. And, uh, and it is the fulfillment of God's promise that whosoever would call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, so you see, there's so, so many ways uh, that we see ourselves in this story. And then there's the name of Isaac, laughter. There was great joy in the fulfillment of God's promise. And as God has fulfilled promises in your life, uh, it should come with great joy. And we should rehearse them remembering them even this morning how god how faithful god is and that awareness should give us great joy remember god chose you you are a child of promise and god has made many promises for you today to rejoice in let us pray together father we come to thank you for your goodness to us for your word and lord as you would speak to us daily 
you speak to us from your word. You speak to us of truth and you assure us, you give us confidence from your word. Lord, I pray that that would encourage our hearts, it would fill us with joy. So we begin the new day today, Lord, that we do it desiring to, uh, to live in this joy and to live by faith. Uh, so, Father, I pray for your encouragement this morning as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Have a, have a great day in the Lord.